helping those in need. Nebraskans come to the aid of those devastated by wildfires. We'll have more on how folks locally are pitching in to help. And even as FFA grows, many rural schools don't have egg education, but that doesn't mean kids aren't missing out. And we catch up with a new member of the Nebraska Ethanol Board. Grow starts now. Wildfires have swept across the plains, killing livestock, incinerating grasslands, destroying barns. Now, folks here in Nebraska are coming to the aid of those across the country, especially in Kansas. NTV's Ify Sinachi, Evo Simba, has our story. A bale of hay may not mean much to some people, but these farmers are hoping this straw can help our neighbors in Kansas on their road to recovery. Hope it helps a little bit. It's just a small contribution to what they need down there. Deadly wildfires consuming more than 1 million acres in Colorado, Oklahoma, Kansas, and Texas. They lost their whole livelihood down there, and some of them. It's really been some horror stories. Now, for the third time in less than a week, neighbors from the Cornhusker State stepping up to help farmers in Kansas. Bill, my brother-in-law and I were talking the one day about wanting to do something for the people down that got burned out and, and didn't know what to do, so we started talking to a couple of the neighbors about maybe getting a load of hay together. A few phone calls is all it took. Farmer Steve Wissing says everyone was willing to give something. There was nobody that said no. Time, trucks, cash, all donated, along with 87 bales of hay worth more than $2,000. I was very proud of everybody. We had 21 people that stepped up and, and uh, give. That's very happy. Steve's brother-in-law, Bill Kurtz, says looking out for your neighbor is a part of small town living. It's just what farmers do. I, everybody does. It's, it's an American way. And yeah, maybe it'll inspire somebody else to do it. To find out how you can help our neighbors in Kansas, head to our website, Nebraska.tv. In St. Labore, Ifisanachi Ivo Simba for NTV News. Cattlemen pushed to restore trade with the largest nation in the world. The National Cattlemen's Beef Association, North American Meat Institute, and the U.S. Meat Export Federation wrote to President Trump this week, urging him to restore access to China. They say it's an anticipated $2.6 billion market, and the U.S. has been shut out for nearly 15 years. Last fall, China announced it had lifted the ban, but the terms have not been settled. Cattlemen tell the president they need his leadership to stop this unfair trade practice. And the Trump administration carrying through with promises to cut environmental red tape. The EPA has killed a proposed ban on a pesticide sold under brand names like Lorsban and Dersban. Nebraska Farm Bureau says it's a sign the administration is moving in the right direction. The group says there were serious scientific concerns about taking this tool away from farmers. The Natural Resources Defense Council accuses President Trump of putting chemical companies before children's health. Environmental groups say the pesticide is linked to health problems in children. Back from the brink, Ravenna's ethanol plant finds new life with new ownership. Coming from the local area, folks in the area say it brings stability. Here's more. It may feel like the fog has lifted. A once bankrupt ethanol plant that was under foreign ownership now flies the stars and stripes. Farmer owned Kappa Ethanol has big plans for this plant near Ravenna. Trying to put our own footprint on it, change it to a little bit of our technology, expand the, the grain side of it. Kappa made a successful bid of $115 million and they're not wasting time adding grain storage. The philosophy is that we know how we'd like to dump corn, we want to dump fast, we want to uh, be state of the art in our ethanol production. It's Kappa's second plant in the area, building on 14 years of success. It's, it's got a great history, we've got uh, great owners, the, the earnings stay here in, in, in central Nebraska and that, that is a, a benefit as well. If we're going to grow Nebraska, we have to grow agriculture. And as the number two ethanol producing state, the governor says it's great economic development. CAP is reopening it and making new investments, about $40 million of investments, and expanding the capacity by about 
So that's really exciting and it really demonstrates the importance of ethanol to our state. Kappa leaders say the plant will also help cattle feeders who use the byproduct coming out. Corn, cattle and ethanol, it's what they call the Golden Triangle. We provide great jobs here in central Nebraska and, and we produce uh, almost 200 million gallons once this is done of, of a clean burning American energy and I think that's, that's one of the other great things about what we're able to do for the, for the area. An effort to set kids straight when it comes to agriculture. This week was the 18th annual Egg Day for area Grand Island fourth graders. More than 800 kids came together for the event. And that Shimmer Egg Day's chair says even here in Nebraska, fourth graders have a lot of misconceptions or lack of education about agriculture. We're no longer just ag and all these kids come from the farm. Um, a lot of kids have never had They've never been around animals. They don't realize that outside of Grand Island, there's all these farmers around there. And they don't realize that these farmers are making their food and, and the things that they use, they have no idea. From live demonstrations to viewing animals many haven't seen in real life, kids have the chance to get real experience with farm animals. We've talked a lot on the show the last couple of years about how many schools are adding FFA and egg education, but still many schools in rural areas don't have egg education programs, but that doesn't mean kids are necessarily missing out. And TV's Asia Aubrey has more on a unique chance to get those kids some of that experience. 40 yep. students yeah. from okay. different school districts open their brains and some animals too. The smell gets me a little bit, but the actual feeling is actually really cool. For some of the students, it was their first time dissecting an animal. Since their school doesn't have the program, it's a way for them to put the books down and get hands-on learning experience. It's different than just knowing about it. It's different to actually cut it open and actually get your hands on and figure out what actually goes on with it. They also had to label internal parts and discover the animals were pregnant. We learned how the embryo gets to feed and how like it doesn't get harmed within inside the animal. Lonnie Kepke, who organized the educational day, says it's a great way for students to get interested in a career path that could help the state. We want them to be involved in the ag industry and uh, so they can uh, become a part of our uh, state uh, economy. Also to look beyond the textbook. Not looking just at books or TV, or looking in real life and actually discovering things. In Broken Bow, Asia Aubrey, NTV News. Millions of dollars are headed to Nebraska for cover crop research. The University of Nebraska Lincoln is part of a $6.6 million research project. They're trying to improve soil health through development and adoption of cover crops. They'll be working with the seed industry and USDA along with other partners. Researchers want to find which cover crops have the greatest potential to improve soil health in a wide geographic area. They're looking at small grains like rye and oats, but also things like hairy vetch and turnips. We've seen a big decline in monarch butterfly numbers, but local kids are doing their part to improve habitat for pollinators. Here's more. Those, those little flat ones, yeah. that'd be a milkweed seed. Seeds of hope. Little fluffy seeds. These seeds could bring back habitat that's been lost, namely milkweed, vital for butterflies. In the last, you know, 20 or so years, uh, we just had a decrease, you know, due to just intensive agriculture, urbanization, um, there's really no one uh, one culprit, I guess you could say, but yeah, just a decrease in even just the diversity of stuff on the landscape. Weed killers like Roundup could drift. You know, spray over and hit your milkweed, which is, you know, an important species for your butterflies and, and other asters, goldenrods, things like that. Some scientists say the monarch butterfly problem is complex and may be related to other factors beyond milkweed. But the plant is a major food and has been in decline. And without pollinators, foods like almonds would disappear. One in every four bites of food we take in a day is a result of some sort of pollination from an animal, such as your insects. Elementary, middle, and high school students take things into their own hands. Talked about some of those little teeniest seeds, you can barely even see them. There will be like wildflowers and other native species of plants for pollinators like uh, birds, uh, bees. Working with wildlife groups. So this is mostly an educational opportunity. Learning how they can grow native flowers at home. We have a science club that does this. Planting for the future. Go home and say, hey, I did something today that matters. And now we're going to check in with results of last week's poll question. 
If you are involved in a farm or ranch or a small cattle feeding operation, we want to know how hard is it to find good hired help. And the results show it looks like it is quite a problem. The overwhelming response, many saying that is a big concern in central and western Nebraska. Now to this week's poll question. We want to know where would you like to see corn prices settle in? We've seen the highs, seven and eight dollar corn and the lows in the last couple of years. But what's a nice number where you could make a profit? That's what we want to know. Log into our Twitter page to cast your vote. Later in the show, we will highlight a man who has dedicated his life to Nebraska agriculture and serving our youth. We'll meet Dewey Linneman coming up later. Up next, a visit to the Nebraska Ethanol Board.